for two people to recognize the glory of the Father. The glory of this house to be greater than that of the former house. Yes. Yes. You've got to understand that the high priest that was in there that day, circumcising this young boy, did not even see yes. who he was. That's true. Come on. The gold and the silver was reflecting the lights of the candlesticks, but he failed to see yes. the glory of the latter yes. house. Yes. Come on. He yes. failed to see the glory of the latter house. Yes. He was the glory of the latter house. His glory excelled all yes. of the glory of yes. Solomon's That's right. temple. That's right. Amen. Yes. To, to the pulpit today, if I told you in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. And then in verse number 12 where it says, And we beheld yes. His glory. Do you understand that the temple was just a place where the Ark of the Covenant sat. It was just a place. And God came down and He lived. And He dwelled behind a great veil. Yes. Amen. The presence of God. The presence of God. But that day, God Himself came into the temple. Yes. Amen. God Himself came to the latter house. I want you to understand this morning that the scripture said and Jesus said that Solomon was arrayed in fine linen and all of that. But he said there's one greater than Solomon that is among you and you don't even recognize him. Only this old man and this old woman would come and the minute that they would look into the arms of Mary and see that young child, they would worship God and say, My eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Oh, you can let me die now because I've seen the consolation. I've seen the glory of the latter house. Yes, yes, yes. An old man that said so, I can die now. I've served all these years looking for the glory to come. And now in the form of a little baby boy, here comes God right into my house. Here comes God right into the place where I live day and night, where I worship and serve day and night. All of a sudden here is the glory of the almighty God brought right into my midst. Can I just hold him? Yes. Can I just feel his arms? Can I just feel his presence? Can I just experience the glory of God after all these years of believing and looking for yes. the glory to come Amen. to this house? Amen. The most valuable glory arises from our relationship to Christ. That's where the glory is. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples that is made, made hands. with hands. That's right. Amen. What are you talking about? You see, when Jesus came in that day, and we know the story how that at the age of 12, he would come back to this very temple. Yep. He would walk in, and he would sit there and listen to the scribes and, and the Pharisees as they began to uh, hear the word and read the word. And this young man would all of a sudden step up. And when the scribes would say, we don't really have an understanding of what this means. But it's written here, so we'll read it in Jesus. A little 12-year-old boy, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The glory's in the house. Amen. I said the glory's in the Amen. house. He comes in and he says, let me tell you what it all means. I'll teach you what you don't understand. I'll show you what you don't know. Yes. And the scripture said they marveled at this 12-year-old boy yes. being able to understand yes. the scriptures. Why? Because he was the Word. Yes. Made flesh. Amen. He was and Amen. is the Word made flesh yes. dwelling among them. Yes. And they can't even see the yes. glory That's of right. God. That's right. That's good. Hallelujah. I remember another time he came back to that very same temple and as he walked up, they were bartering. They were selling. They were making a mockery of the house of God. Yeah. 
where the glory was supposed to be, now all of a sudden it has become a business, a franchise. Each and every person on the outside making money off of the sacrifices and doing all they could just to serve the way that they wanted the temple to be. Right. But Jesus walks up and he looks at them and he says, don't you understand something? My house has, is supposed to be a, a house of prayer. Yes. You have made it a den of thieves and the glory of God, God himself in the form of flesh came down and he began to do some whooping. I mean, he opened up a camp that day and he whooped some people right out of his glorious house. Yes. He That's says, true. you don't even know what you're messing with. Yeah. The glory is right before you and you don't even see it. Come on, yes. come on. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on, that's good. Amen. But I especially go to the thoughts today of that day when the word that was made flesh yes. kneeled in the garden and he said, Father, yeah, come on, come on. I don't know what to do with all of this. All right. yeah. I know why you sent me. I know why I'm here. But Father, if it be your will, let this cup of suffering pass from me. The flesh just doesn't want to do it. Yes. But I know why I'm here. Right. I'm here to bring the glory of God back to the house. Yes, amen. Amen. I'm here amen. to bring the glory of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes back to hearts and lives that have been separated from man, from God because of sin. They're hungry, they desire, they come and they bring their sacrifices, but they know that it's only good for a year. They just hope that for some reason they don't die in the process of another year before a sacrifice is made. Their sins are rolled ahead. But Father, if it be your will, yes. I'll do it. They come, they arrest him. They take him, they beat him. They take him and they hang him on the cross. Yes. While he is on the cross, the mockery and all the shame, yes. if you be the Son of God. Yes. Oh, you think you you just think you're the glory. Yeah. Right. You just think that you're the Son of God. If you really are the Son of God, why don't you just call a legion of angels and they'll come and they'll just they'll just whoop up on us as well and they'll deliver you from this cross. That's right. If you're really the son of God, why don't you just bring yourself down yeah. off of this cross? Yes. But Jesus simply says this, Father, yeah. forgive them for they don't know yes. what Amen. they do. Amen. A few moments later, he would say these words, it is finished. Amen. Amen. And he would bow his head or drop his head as life goes out of his body. But let me tell you, that wasn't the end. That's right. Amen. It was the beginning. Yeah. Back at the temple. Yes. That Haggai said, go and be strong, O Zerubbabel. Yeah. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Joshedek, the high priest. And work because I'm with you. Yeah. The house that you are building, the glory of it, is going to be greater yeah. than the former yeah. house. You yeah. just keep working yes. and you keep building no matter what anybody else says. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Back at that same temple, yes. when he said it is finished, the Bible said, I will shake the heavens yes. and the earth, Amen. the sea and Amen. the dry land. Hallelujah. Yes, the scripture said that the earth began to shake that day. Yes. All of a sudden, people began to realize that there is something supernatural yes. going on here. Yes, amen. It began to shake. The desire of all nations had come. Amen. They had crucified him. They had hung him on the cross. But when he said it is finished, the Bible said that as the earth began to quake, that temple began to rock and roll, baby. It began to move. And that big old veil that was so thick all of a sudden began to rip and tear. Amen. And all of a sudden, for the first time, God exposes himself yes. to the world. Yes. He exposes himself yes. to the temple. Amen. Hallelujah. 
the glory of the latter shall be greater than the glory of the former. Yes, amen. People in that building that day must have fell on their faces saying, we're going to die. We're going to die. We can't look in the presence of God. But the apostle Paul said, how be it the most high dwelleth not in temples that is made with hands. Amen. 